Let us pray. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when you were given up to the will of your persecutors, suffered many torments when they took off the purple robe, which was stuck to your wounds, and put upon you your own clothes. Grant that after I have put off the clothing of this body, I may be clad with the robe of perfect charity, and that I may be adorned with your merit, and through your mercy be introduced as an adopted son into the heavenly inheritance. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who in the midst of reproach and injury bore your cross with excessive pain on your sacred and cut shoulders. Wearied and panting for breath, you toiled exceedingly under its heavy weight. Give me grace to take hold of the cross of self-denial with ardent devotion, and to imitate with the most fervent of charity the example of your virtues, and to follow you in humility even unto death. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when you were led from the city with two thieves, did not refuse to be pressed upon and thrust, hastened and to be afflicted in many ways. Draw me after you, that I may quickly follow. Grant that for your sake I may entirely deny, forsake, and go out of myself. Give me grace to think of you alone and to find no joy except in you, my Redeemer. Grant that I may love you alone and may return love for love. May I earnestly seek after you and live to you alone. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when bowed down by the weight of your cross, at length reached the place of punishment, where, offered e quite exhausted, they offered you wine mingled with gall. May you extinguish in me all gluttonous and carnal desire, giving me grace never to consent to any impure or unlawful pleasure. But may I take my food in moderation to the glory of your name and may hunger and thirst after you alone and find no pleasure or gladness except in you. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who was stripped before the gaze of all people on Mount Calvary, and the soreness of your wounds being increased by the removal of your clothing. You did not refuse to undergo for my sake the most dreadful pain. Grant that I may love the spirit of poverty, and never be disturbed by want or scarcity. Give me grace to bear patiently any difficulties or troubles in this life, for the glory of your name. Strip my heart of every vain fancy and affection, and grant me a holy intent with pious desires, renewing within me daily a most pure love for yourself. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who gave himself up to be extended naked upon the wood of the cross and the joints of your most holy limbs to be wrenched apart, most cruelly nailed and fastened thereto. Then for my sake you suffered your most delicate hands and feet to be most deeply wounded. Grant, O Lord, that I might remember with a faithful and grateful heart this your unspeakable charity when you did of your own accord stretch out your hands to be bored and your feet to be pierced through. O Lord, enlarge and extend my heart by a perfect love of you. Pierce it and fix it to yourself with the nail of your sweetest love and shut up within yourself alone all my senses, all my thoughts and all my affections. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise.
reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was famished. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, had him stand on the highest point of the temple, and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will lift you up, so that he will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Once again it is written, You are not to put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their grandeur. He said to him, I will give you all these things if you throw yourself to the ground and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, You are to worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and angels came and began ministering to his needs. Now when Jesus heard that John had been imprisoned, he went into Galilee. And while in Galilee he moved from Nazareth to, from Nazareth to make his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way by the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light, and those who sit in the region and shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach this message, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. As he was walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea they were fishermen. He said to them, Follow me and I will turn you into fishers of people. They left their nets immediately and followed him. Going on from there he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in a boat with Zebedee their father mending their nets. Then he called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In a way, it is reassuring to read of the temptation of Jesus, because it makes us realise that there is nothing wrong with being tempted. In fact, temptation is a good sign, for it tells us that the devil is keen to subvert us. However, it is our reaction to temptation that is the key and we should note that Jesus gave the devil no quarter. This is often when we become unstuck. After a spiritual high, the baptism in the Jordan, came the low, the time of temptation. And we can and will find the same pattern in our own experiences. We enjoy a spiritual high and we are full of the joy of Christ, and then crash, back to earth we fall with a bang. Indeed, there is a fundamental truth here, for being baptised by the Holy Spirit will not prevent us from being tempted. For it is our lot while we are here on earth to be tempted constantly. However, the Holy Spirit will provide us with the means, the spiritual strength indeed, to resist temptation in the way we read of Christ resisting here. I would add just one small but significant warning to remind us that the devil is canny and will try very hard to manipulate us. 
Remember that he possesses an intelligence far greater than our own. He is cunning and subtle. And the more we grow spiritually, the more he will put us under attack. We should not try to engage with him. For this he enjoys and we will play into his hands. If you are in any doubt as to how he twists his words to fit his purpose, consider the first five verses of Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more shrewd than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Is it really true that God said you must not eat from any tree of the orchard? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the orchard, but concerning the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the orchard, God said, You must not eat from it, and you must not touch it, or else you will die. The serpent said to the woman, Surely you will not die, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like divine beings who know good and evil. See how crafty the devil is. Eve knew very well that she was not to eat the fruit of this tree. But the devil turned it around and suggested that if she did eat it, she would become like God himself, suggesting that it would be a good thing for her to enjoy the fruit. And in this way she is lured into the trap. How much better it would have been had she emulated Jesus in verse 10, the Gospel, and told the devil to go away right at the beginning. This is what we must do whenever we feel the onset of anything that we have doubts about. This account should be a warning to us, for the devil sneaks up on us when we are not looking and worms his way into our mind. If we are not alert, it is easy for him to take control. Remember what Christ said, and tell the devil to get lost at the first opportunity. Do not engage with the him, do not try and get the better of him. Just pray that we keep alert and recognise the threat when it appears. Following his trial in the desert, Jesus starts his ministry to the Jewish people. And we read of him wandering by the seashore and calling it to four fishermen. Come with me and I will make you fishers of men, he commanded. Consider the fact that the men had no idea who he was or what he was talking about. But clearly Jesus had spoken with authority. The fishermen obeyed without question. Here was a man who was not even from their part of the country. And yet they dropped their nets and left their boats behind. If it had been you or I, no doubt we would still be there listing the reasons why we could not come until next week or maybe next year sometime. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, being regenerate and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God world without end. Amen.